What role do you think um, edge infrastructure will play in extending 5G into enterprises? Well, if you look at the proposition in the past, given the bandwidth that was available, etc., enterprises had no choice but to execute all their computation on site if it involved things like analytics, etc. That is now an opportunity for the carriers to actually offer the services, the computer infrastructure, so that uh, those enterprises in their remote locations can execute on the carrier's infrastructure and then with a faster latency, you know, have, still have the results. So they can back, the enterprise can back off the investment in the infrastructure that the telcos uh, then can offer on the edge instead and, and go to a services model. And Will, what, what are you seeing that this relationship between the edge and 5G and moving to the enterprise? Um, th there's, there's been a huge trend from my perspective uh, with private LTE deployment. So um, enterprises being able to leverage that wide uh, area, wide, you know, networking infrastructure, uh, maybe if there isn't fiber to the last mile and that sort of thing. I think also, um, as Klaus pointed to, you know, the, the latency advantages with putting compute at the edge, you're seeing trends um, and also service offerings around um, software-defined uh, networking solutions, SD-WAN. I mean, that's a pretty hot uh, topic these days, and it's a segment that that's growing quite quickly. And, you know, carriers in the U.S., for example, like Sprint, are offering SD-WAN services as they partner with uh, these SD-WAN providers. Brilliant. I, I get really excited whenever I hear a question about, about, about Edge because I think Edge is, is a fantastic opportunity to bring enterprise services a lot more closer to, to consumers. Um, SD-WAN, as, as, as Will, Will spoke on, but you also have to look at the, the, that an Edge network has so little legacy today. So bringing, uh, bringing technology like cloud native is going to be really, really important as well. And that helps speed up that you know, time to market for those enterprise services. Also as well, when you talk to enterprise verticals today, they go, well, you know, I, 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 I got to make sure my data is secure, so I'm going to keep it on-prem. I'm going to keep it very, very close to me. But what they're seeing now is that the services that a comm service provider can offer is a lot more than just a pipe, right? They have truck roll. They have, they have um, relationships with their, with their subscribers and, and enterprise customers themselves as well. So the edge is now the new, the new sandbox, if you will, for those service deployments, and especially services that require low latency or can take advantage of low latency that comes with 5G. I think that's where you see the rubber hits the road with regards to um, monetization of services on the edge. Well, just before we, we wrap up the discussion for today, um, can we just take one look at service offerings? Klaus, what, what service offerings is HPE delivering that will help operators with digital transformation? So we do a lot of work, obviously, to help the transformation of the network itself towards 5G. Uh, as an example, we are developing platforms specifically intended to support edge computing, uh, including all the acceleration, et cetera, that's needed for, say, analytics on the edge, as well as doing the radio processing and things to bring down the cost of operating the network. So that's on the network side. Um, things we will bring forward is work we have traditionally delivered directly to enterprises. We are collaborating with uh, telcos in order to make that service offerings from them that they can offer out to enterprise customers, government entities, SMBs. An example we touched on earlier there was our Aruba portfolio, where we help uh, telcos extend their footprint with Wi-Fi and offer that as a service to enterprises, uh, rather than the enterprise itself having to invest and manage uh, Wi-Fi infrastructure. So those are two very different examples, but uh, examples of what we do. And Brian, how is um, Intel helping service providers with digital transformation? Well, so there's a distinct difference between digital transformation and, and what we term network transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's an important uh, uh, step in this, in this journey that we're on at the moment. I think that network transformation has been about modernization of networks, has been moving away from fixed function to more standard, high volume servers, more highly composable. That it continues at pace in the industry. When I, when I see digital transformation, I see it's how we help the industry innovate faster and how we, how we help uh, broker relationships and conversations across the industry, be it from open source or be it with, with cloud service providers and telcos, be it with IoT vendors and enterprises, and bringing collaborations together to help accelerate that innovation cycle, as I spoke about earlier on, because there is a move 
and, and as I said, a democratization of, of, of services, and that's coming from com service providers, but also the non-traditional um, uh, providers in, in this industry as well. And when those collaborations happen, and, and you know, working obviously with Hewlett Packard Enterprise is, is, is really, really great for Intel, because we, we have a partner in Hewlett Packard Enterprise who understand the need to bring that service um, innovation cycle to the market as well. And that's really, really important. Will, final question for, for you, if I may. Um, We've heard what Klaus and Brian have had to say about uh, their service offerings, but what trends are you seeing from a service provider perspective? Well, you know, one really big trend is, you know, that they will continue to deploy what I call kind of purpose built or single, you know, focused infrastructure from the likes of Ericsson, Nokia, uh, and so on. But there's a real trend to want to embrace open compute, open, you know, storage, um, software-defined fabric, and and that's where Intel and HPE are really driving um, the industry, and it's it's very disruptive from not only an OPEX perspective, but again, uh, you know that agility, you know, utilizing the software-defined tools is also bringing significant um, uh, you know OPEX advantages as well. You need less staff to sort of manage these these new generation networks, and I'll also add that I think you know companies like HPE and Intel are doing a great job bringing um, a monetization opportunities um, to them and helping to incubate that. When you look at 4G, um, a lot of the over-the-top providers rode on top of the all of the network infrastructure that the carriers and operators spent billions of dollars to deploy, yet they somewhat got shut out of the monetization. And I see a lot of activity in, you know, with respect to what HPE is doing and Intel doing really to, to, to bring new monetization opportunities to the operators. And I think that that's, that's a tremendous uh, thing that both companies are doing today. Well, thank you very much, Will. We do appreciate you joining us from this very early hour in Denver. Uh, and Klaus from uh, Grenoble and Brian here in the studio. You know, thank you all very much indeed for, for joining us and taking part. A reminder that you can explore more information around these issues, including access to a downloadable white paper from the website. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.